This world holds many a tale of monsters, entities of fiction and mythologies around the globe. But as far as we know, they are just that. Fiction. I am here to tell you about beings capable of turning even the most stoic adults into fearful infants. Creatures that have gone down in history as both god and devil for the power they held over primeval man. They are the reason we fear the dark, and what makes the unknown so dreadful. These are nature's monsters. Picture yourself taking a stroll through the woods on a warm summer's day. The sun shines pleasantly through the trees, illuminating your path. A gentle breeze carrying a sweet aroma greets you as you come to a patch of beautiful wildflowers. Amongst the chirping of birds and distant calls of other wildlife, a low hum makes itself known. It slowly grows in volume. Looking around, you don't see much, just a serene natural landscape. Ignoring it, you continue to go on your walk. As you do, an excruciating pain radiates from a single spot on your leg. Glancing down, you see a lone black and yellow insect struggling against its rooted stinger. Swatting it away, you feel a sharp pain in your neck, then your back, then your calf. Then, all of a sudden, the low hum becomes a cacophony of intense buzzing. Hundreds of bees begin swarming around you. Where did they come from? You didn't see anything resembling a hive nearby. You attempt to flee. As their tiny syringes puncture your flesh, their furious buzzing, drowning out all other noises. Your heart races, pumping the venom quicker through your system. This overload of toxins causes your head to spin and your muscles to weaken. Before long, you find yourself falling to your knees. The last bit of energy you have used in a vain attempt to struggle on. Collapsing. Pain has overwhelmed what remains of your senses. Gradually, even that starts to fade. Until... Nothing. Long after your heart stops beating, the furious swarm continues to wage a pointless war on your increasingly cooling cadaver. You have just had the misfortune of encountering Apis mellifera, the Africanized honeybee, an unnatural hybrid of the African lowland honeybee and various American and European subspecies. While this is a fictional scenario and deaths from this species are incredibly rare, they have occurred. In 1956, this hybrid species was introduced into Brazil in the hopes that they would increase the production of honey, due to their ability to forage and bring back more materials at a younger age than European honeybees. But by the next year, 26 different swarms escaped the quarantined areas and spread throughout the Americas, eventually arriving in Texas by the year 1990. Now, superficially, there isn't a major difference between this species and those found naturally in the states, the only physical difference being their shorter wings, though you do need to get pretty close to see this. Now, the biggest difference between these animals are their behaviors, most notably their aggression levels. Like all eusocial hymenopteran insects, bees, ants, and wasps, Africanized honeybees will swarm threats to their hives, sending waves of soldiers to their potential deaths for the good of the colony. But Africanized bees take it to the extreme, sending out far larger numbers, swarming faster, and reacting to potential threats from a farther distance, some being known to attack enemies 500 meters away from their hive. This intense level of aggression may seem like overkill to most, but when you consider their genetic lineage, it becomes a lot clearer. African bees have had to evolve to contend with a lot more natural threats than their western relatives. From competition with other hymenopterans such as ants and wasps, to raids from honey badgers that you already know don't care. These insects have earned such a fierce reputation in their home continent that even elephants fear them. But they're not all bad, of course. As stated before, they are superior honey producers to the native species, and as such, those brave enough to attempt to farm them have reaped much higher rewards. Not only that, Africanized bees appear to be much more parasite and disease resistant to boot. 
even seeming less receptible to colony collapse disorder, a yet to be fully understood phenomena plaguing beekeepers. Surprisingly, not all instances of killer bee are actually aggressive. I guess monsters do have their softer sides. Perhaps this is due to these animals containing more native bee genes than African. After all, conflict with this species has been readily declining over the years. Humanity's ability to adapt, implementing better safety measures and educating locals may have also influenced the dramatic decline in bee attacks over the years. Today, Africanized honeybees take center stage as species of choice in Brazil aviculture. I suppose it goes to show. Even little monsters can have a big influence. And not all of it bad. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you're an animal lover like me, please consider donating to the World Land Trust, a charity that aims to help wildlife through buying land, preventing development, and helping endangered species.